I'm Alice and this is Nature News, your weekly source of science, climate, and environmental policy for the week of August 21st, 2020. Now today we have a lot of animal talk, so if you love animals, make sure you hit that like button. But first I wanted to start with the Japanese town of Kamikatsu. Now they famously declared they would go waste free by this year, 2020. They did this in 2003, so they've had 17 years to accomplish it. Now that the years arrived though, how have they done? It turns out pretty well actually. So Kamikatsu was able to transition from openly incinerating all of its trash to actually reusing and recycling 80% of its waste, which is excellent progress but it ultimately fell short of its 100% goal. And there's one main reason behind that, and that's unrecyclable plastic packaging made of mixed, re mixed materials. Now, while the town is very happy for the accomplishment and the leadership they can now share in the fight against plastic pollution, they know that without industry changing to single source packaging, no city will be able to accomplish a truly circular economy with zero waste. So let's hope we can push corporations to do better on packaging and do to really become zero waste. Here in California, the heat is rising. It has been 105 every day in the city that I'm at. Lots of people are cranking up the AC and the energy grid is overloaded. They've actually been doing rolling blackouts in California for the first time since 2001. There are more than 30 wildfires also in the region. And a lot of this is due to climate change, which has really been making droughts more persistent and wildfires more common. Do you want to help spread the word on protecting our wildlife and being eco-friendly? Well, then hit that subscribe button, give this video a share on social media, and leave a comment down below on what you're doing today to reduce waste, save energy, or help the planet. Speaking of the heat, Greenland's ice sheets have actually passed the point of no return. Nearly 40 years of satellite data from the Greenland shows that the glaciers on the island have actually shrunk so much that even if global warming were to stop right now, they would continue to shrink. Now, the shrinking glaciers in Greenland are a problem for the entire planet because the melting sheets actually end up in the Atlantic Ocean and eventually all of the world's oceans. And sea level rise is happening. It's happening right now for a lot of civilizations and cities and islands. And a lot of places are gonna be on the brink of collapse if it continues to go up. An Oxford-based solar technology firm hopes by the end of the year to begin manufacturing the world's most efficient solar panels and become the first to sell them to the public within the next year. They're actually using a crystal which was first discovered more than 200 years ago. Oxford PV claims that the next generation solar panels will be able to generate almost a third more electricity than traditional silicon based solar panels by coating the panels with this thin layer of crystals. I do have an update for you on the Meridius oil spill, which I talked about last week. Now on August 15th, the ship actually broke in two, spilling a bit more oil into the sea. Luckily there were booms in place and most of the oil had already been pumped off the ship. But the government has now arrested the captain of that ship and they are currently investigating why this ship was actually so close to shore as it's supposed to remain more than 10 miles from the island. There's also been a lot of ghost ships. Now, I'm not talking about the name of a movie. These are actually what marine researchers have called the boats that have actually washed up on shore in Japan with corpses of North Korean fishermen. Now, it stumped them for a long time, but, they've, but they now know that it's actually re the result of illegal Chinese vessels that have been pillaging the ocean of fish stock all over the world. Now, over the last few weeks, many have voiced concern about their appearance in the Galapagos, but it now appears that they've been depleting the oceans around North Korea of squid as well. Another place that they're actually not allowed to fish under a UN sanction. But who is actually going to police the Chinese fishing vessels? I don't know. And reports say there's actually somewhere between 200 and 800,000 of these vessels around the world, which is a huge number and a huge difference of numbers. They think there's about 10,000 of these boats in international waters that are actually catching fish, whale, and shark, usually illegally. 
Now, China is not only the world's biggest seafood exporter, but the country's population also accounts for more than a third of all the fish consumption in the world. They've depleted the seas close to home. So now they're basically sailing farther afield to exploit the waters of other countries, including those that are most fragile, like West Africa, Latin America, places where enforcement tends to be weaker as local governments lack the resources or inclination to police their waters, just like in the Galapagos. Now, most Chinese distant waterships are so large that they scoop up as many fish in, in one week as local boats from Senegal or Mexico might catch in a year. That's pretty terrible. Pacific walruses are again gathering much earlier than usual at Alaska's Chukchi beach sites. Now, the walruses that summer in this area, mostly females and their calves, have evolved to use floating ice as platforms for food foraging, resting, and rearing their young. But almost every year since 2007, which was at the time a record low year for Arctic sea ice, they've actually flocked to this area called Point Lay where they have gathered on the beaches. The problem is there are so many walruses gathering and so early that there's sometimes 40 to 50,000 animals and these mass gatherings pose a lot of dangers. There's also some heartbreaking news out of Washington state where defenders of wildlife have learned that the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife has actually wiped out all of the surviving wolves of the wedge pack. Even after dozens of wolves have been killed following conflicts with livestock, the U.S. Forest Service has failed to change how, when, or where cattle are permitted to graze in this prime wolf habitat. You'd think if you were going to bring back wolves, you would actually have some sort of plan in place. And there is another way. The Forest Service needs to promote grazing practices that protect cattle from being attacked. And the agency needs to hold commercial cattle ranchers responsible for actually protecting their livestock and not just blaming and killing wolves when that happens. Now, maybe they should be looking into what these farmers in Africa are doing by painting eyes on the cow's rumps. <laughs> From 2015 to 2018, scientists from the University of New South Wales in Australia actually went to Botswana and did some work in predator conservation. They painted artificial eyes on nearly 700 cows, and then they monitored to see how many were killed by lions and leopards. Now, remarkably, while animals without the acrylic paint eyes continued to be ambushed by lions, none of the animals with the eyes painted on their rumps were killed by the apex predators. Could this also be used for wolves? I hope so, and I hope that they try it because we've had a long, dark history in this country with wolves. Now, this week, the Trump administration took a significant step to opening up the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge in Alaska, one of the nation's last pristine areas of wilderness. They wanna open it up to oil and gas drilling. This has been a saga for more than 20 years. This is also the home to polar bears, wolves, caribou, and really the last wilderness in America. The refuge's coastal plain area, which would amount to about 8% of the total area, would be available for oil and gas exploration. But it's going to put animals at risk. There's going to be noise pollution, construction, roads, airstrips, not to mention ugly oil pipelines crisscrossing all over the place, and there could also be oil spills. Bernhardt said that there will be at least two area-wide leasing sales of at least 400,000 acres each um, to be held at December 2021 and then December 2024. Now, there's still a lot to be done with this bill. It may not go into effect. There are lots of organizations actually suing the Trump administration about this. So we'll see if it is able to move forward. I certainly hope not. And I think a lot of people on both sides of the fence are strongly opposed to this. This species was missing for 50 years and has now been rediscovered. This is the Somali Sengi, a mouse-sized elephant true that has just been rediscovered alive and well in the Horn of Africa. Now, the Somali Sengi mates for life. It can race around at about 30 kilometers an hour and sucks up ants with its cute little trunk-like nose. It hadn't been documented by researchers since 1968. That's pretty awesome. 
Have you guys ever seen a mink? They're actually cute little weasel-like animals and they're prized for their fur. Now, I didn't know this, but many mink farms still exist in America and all over Europe actually during the COVID pandemic, places like the Netherlands, Denmark, and Spain have reported outbreaks of COVID in mink pelt farms, which has led to the culling of more than a million of the soft furry mammals. From laboratory experiments, it's also clear that ferrets, a close relative of the mink, is also readily infected by the no novel coronavirus. And it's also now hit two farms in Utah where they've had to kill or a lot of animals have actually been found dead. Now, there's actually 245 mink farms in the US, which was also really surprising to me to find out. Um, I'm not sure what they're doing to stop the spread of coronavirus in these places, but it is interesting to see that it has now gone to one other species of animals from humans. Now, they've now found microplastics in human organs, and in every fish they've ever tested in the ocean, they've also found microplastics. So we should all know the dangers in ingesting them and using them. Microplastics entering the human body via direct exposure through ingestion or in inhalation can actually lead to an array of health impacts, including, this is gonna be a long list, inflammation, genotoxicity, stress, cancer, cardiovascular diseases, inflammatory bowel disease, diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, chronic inflammation, autoimmune conditions, neurodegenerative diseases, and stroke. If that list isn't enough for you to give up plastic, I don't know what is. But that's all I have for you this week. If you need some tips on how to reduce plastic waste in your home, you can check out some of my other great videos on going plastic free. And please help spread this message and protect our wildlife by sharing this video with a friend, leaving a comment and hitting that like button and that subscribe button. I will see you next week.